You guys see that? Winter is here. Welcome back, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and it is winter. And this is the time of the season where we like to stay indoors just to keep warm and also spend a lot of time playing games. I always wanted to build a real retro emulator type thing for my TV. Now every time when I build one, it's just so ugly. I just sit it by a TV. I don't want to keep it there. But now this changes with this. This is a Raspberry Pi NES case. So it fits the Raspberry Pi perfectly in there and it has all the components up in front so it looks and feels just like a old school retro system. If you open up the lid over here, you will see that you have the USB ports and also the uh, network jack on the side. You have the SD card slot. On the back, you have the power, HDMI, and also the audio port. It's a little bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi itself, you could see, but that's where it works. You know, you fit everything in and all the components get to be moved. Now you can pick up one of these guys off eBay for about $18. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can see where that is. And also you don't have to really use the Raspberry Pi. If you got anything that's a Raspberry Pi form factor like the La Potato, La Potato, the Rock 64, Tinkerboard, they all fit into this case perfectly and will work. Okay, so to get started, let's put this guy together. All right, so I'm showing you a little bit of the contents in the box because it actually comes with some stuff. There we go, we're gonna open it up. And in the box itself, you're gonna notice the case and screws, you're gonna see some screws. A screwdriver that it comes with, so you don't even need to bring your own screwdriver. It, it comes with one. And instructions on how to set everything up. Let's crack open this case. And you can see right away it has a lot of these connectors, USB, and the network port. And it's so obvious you know where everything's going to go. So we're just going to start putting this together. And hopefully I don't screw this up because knowing me, I will and pushing this in. Okay, so you gotta push the HDMI kinda into the slot itself, and then you gotta match up the holes. So the HDMI's gotta go into the hole right now. There you go. And if you could see, it actually fits really well into that slot. And then the SD card would fit as well. Next up is you gotta hook up the pins to top the most left you could say. The USB cable should have went in first and I just jumped the gun. I'm just gonna pop this in here. And the network cable will go in that spot. Okay. Now everything is in place and that was it. I just have to screw everything down make sure there's no kink. Now the case itself actually fits a fan. So you can see it fits a fan that you can put there. And I do have a fan which is, I don't know, you know what? Give me one second, I'm gonna. Okay, so it's a 30 millimeter fan and it fits right into this case where you actually have these little ears that kind of hold it into place. So if you want, you could use a fan and pop it right in. I'm actually not going to use it. I have the heat sink. Everything should handle well because retro arc and depending on what you're playing like Super Nintendo and stuff, it's not too bad. Now that I have everything in place, the next thing is to screw it all together. Now they come with a bunch of screws and you kind of need to make sure what goes for the case and which one goes for um, the actual Raspberry Pi. So uh, there are two black ones and six silver ones. So the six silver ones, I'm assuming, should go for the outside case, and the two black ones go in the inside. You don't really need four screws. Two screws will hold down the whole thing. Now, let's use their trusty screwdriver that it comes with. And I'm just gonna screw here. Okay, it's a little tight. It doesn't really have teeth in the plastic, so you're the first time you're screwing it in, you're actually creating the teeth, so make sure it goes in as straight as possible. All right, that's in. It ain't moving now. Let me just see if I can tighten this side up. Next is the case itself. Make sure everything go closes completely. I don't know if I want to use all six screws, but I'm going to do it anyway. This has turned into a build video. Six screws. Ooh, it has magnet. Okay, this screwdriver really hurts because it's got like some sharp edges and I don't really like it. All right, I'm, I'm swapping out the screwdriver because it, it with uh, same, almost same size, just 
so much easier. You have these four feet you could see, um, like right there. It has some like plastic on it. Just remove it so you could get the rubbery, grippy feeling. So I'm just removing all the four plastic from each feet. And there we have it. This thing's grippy. It's not gonna slide off the table. Yeah, it's actually got really good grip. It's not gonna, it's definitely not gonna slide off the table. Uh, it's got a little pocket on the bottom so you could put SD cards. It actually says SD cards and it has the logo there. So that's pretty cool. That way if you have other emulations or other, like if you want to turn this into Cody, you have another SD card you can just pop in the bottom. All right, now off to the actual installation of RetroArc and how to get that going. So let's switch over to a computer. So now that we're on the desktop, the first thing you want to do is navigate over to retropi.com.uk. That's where you can download the image that you can load right into your Raspberry Pi and get it running right away. So I'm going to navigate over to Downloads and select a platform. You can actually install Raspberry Pi Zero on this thing just to save a couple of bucks, but I have a Raspberry Pi 3, that's what I'm going to be using. So I'm going to select Raspberry Pi 3. It's going to download the latest image and we're going to let that go as it downloads. Okay, now that everything's all downloaded, you wanna pull up Etcher. Etcher is actually a really good program to be flashing your images onto your SD cards for your Raspberry Pi and stuff like that. So, now that I have everything's all set up, I'm just gonna go select image, hit Raspberry Pi. You don't have to worry if it's in the zip file, it'll automatically decompress it for you. Hit open, select the drive you wanna install this on, which is four gigabyte. I'm actually using a four gigabyte SD card on this. Slow as possible. It's actually on a class two. I don't even know where I found this card, but I'm just gonna be use it. All right, and it's gonna flash the image onto the SD card. And once this is over, we just bring this over to RetroPie and we'll start setting that up. All right, now that everything's done and installed, all you wanna do is stick the SD card in the slot right over there on the bottom. And you should be good to go. So everything seems to be working. Okay, so there's actually two ways to transfer games into your RetroPie. One is you could stick a USB key in there and it'll actually create these folders where you have to stick the games in. Or two, you could actually go from the network. That involves setting up either the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet. So I'm actually using the Xbox controller and I find this to be one of the best controllers for the RetroArc. It's USB enabled, has all the triggers that you need. So okay, now we're in the main screen. So it detects a gamepad and it's telling me to press a button. So I'm pressing and holding a button, D-pad, this is where you set up your controller. So up, down, left, right, start, select. Since we are in the RetroPie setup, uh, there's a couple of things. Now for me, I don't have overscan. That's why you see these little black borders. You could enable that through Raspberry Pi config, which will require rebooting the whole thing. So here I would just go to advanced option, in case you have the black borders like me. Over scan, select, yes. Okay, so next time I reboot it, it will actually fill in the black borders. Okay, so I have to set up my Wi-Fi. And in this step, I believe you actually need a keyboard. Connect to Wi-Fi, okay. Okay. Yeah, you need the, you definitely need a keyboard to type in the password for this. So let me go ahead and do that. If you can see that I have the IP address through the Wi-Fi and it's dot 72. So one of the ways is sticking in the USB to your Raspberry Pi, it'll generate these folders that you could put your ROM in, SNES and all that stuff. And then when you bring it over to computer, you just drop your ROM files to, to the appropriate folders. Now, the second method is actually using the network. Remember we got the IP address earlier, which is dot 72. We're gonna open a folder, file browser, and navigate over to 192.168.105.72. This will actually bring up the SD card uh, on your Raspberry Pi. And in here you could go to ROMs, select the folder that you wanna drop your games to, like SNES, and you drop the game in there. Now I'm not gonna tell you where to get the games, you could probably just Google it and figure it out yourself, but yeah, once you drop the game inside, you can now restart your emulation station and it'll see it. So in here, we're gonna hit start, I'm gonna go to quit, go to restart emulation station. Yes, do you really wanna restart? And give it a couple of seconds and you should see your new game dropped in. Now why use Mega Man X, hit X, and there we have it, the game is loading. 
this was one of my all-time favorite games after Legend of Zelda and all this other stuff, but I love the Mega Man Series X, X2, you know, all that stuff. It's just fast action for like a SNES space. If you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this, hit up in the comments below. I will leave all the links in the description for what we just did and also to the NES case for the Raspberry Pi. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hit that little bell notification icon just so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And if you like what I do on this channel and you wanna support it, I do have links to my Patreon and also my shop for merchandise if you guys are interested. As I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.